comment I saw was, LEC has learned to weaponize cringe <laughs> and use it as a tool. And I think it's true. Hello everyone, this is Darius from The Shot Caller, joined here by Efi Shox the Potterer, who is now a freelancer. Woo! It's first time we're speaking with you being a freelancer yeah. and first time um, you've come back to the LEC. You've enjoyed your time this weekend? I definitely have. Uh, I was just talking to Ender and, you know, I've explained in my video and stuff uh, that it's just all about being able to decide my own time a little bit more and I just feel so energized when I come here now and um, because our team has gotten bigger luckily more people have been able to enjoy that before we had a super small crew so everyone had to be there from start to finish every time now in the production crew and in the casters there's more people there's color casters that can sit out for three games and Everyone's just much more energized, uh, and me as well, so I'm really enjoying that because I feel like I can carry, you know, if I need to. If something goes wrong, I feel ready for everything. So th does it make LEC a bit more special for you in general, given that you're not on every week and then you, you try like 200% to, to make those times uh, worth it? Yeah, I guess so. And also keep an eye on, because if I come on too strong, that could also be bad. But uh, when I'm at home, I definitely miss the broadcast. I make sure I'm super prepared when I'm there, which is sometimes a bit more difficult because there's a lot of different things going on. But yeah, I don't want anyone to forget me, you know? So when <laughs> I'm here, I want to make him remember me. Of course, you you will hopefully um, be with the with the league community for for many years to come. And of yeah. course, when we do watch you uh, on stream, for example, on twitchtv shocks as well, uh, you play league. So uh, yeah. you know there were some people worried, like, oh no, is she only going to do CS:GO yeah. now? <laughs> I was really surprised because. Um uh, I guess when I said I was freelance and people thought that meant that, oh, so you don't work for Riot anymore ever. And th that's just not what freelance is, right? I mean, you know this as well. Um, it just means that I can still work for Riot, but I can also work for other things. Yeah. Exactly. And then like sometimes, you know, when a, a different event does come up, for example, IEM Katowice is going yeah. on right now. In theory, you could have made the choice or if you would have had the office, I don't know. Yeah, the we don't know. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I believe there was something on the table, but uh, as I learned in freelance, nothing is certain until you sign the contract yeah. uh, and that all fell through but yeah i made some good things out of my time so it's no biggie exactly you know you gotta you gotta work with what you get essentially yeah. at the end of the day now lec though in general uh looks very very interesting you've been the lucky charm of misfits of course yeah. um who've made a comeback but when you weren't there you know misfits have been really struggling mm -hmm. so what is it like your overall take on the best teams in the league and which teams do you still look for and go like oh yeah they, they will make playoffs um, well, of course, G2 is super good, and I know that a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, it's easy because the rest is is not on the same level, so it's easy for them to win games. But I think even if that happens, I can see them evolving and being the best team. I honestly don't think anyone takes away their trophy here in spring. And that might be anticlimactic, but I also think it's a wonderful story because Perks in particular has not been there for a long time and dominated two years in a row in 2016 and 17. So I'm hyped to see that storyline play out, <laughs> narrative. Um, but um, on top of that, I'm just really excited by a lot of teams, SK Gaming, they're kind of here nor there. Selfmade is great and is carrying the team very often. But I think they're exciting. I think they have a new win and I think they are really going to contend for these playoff spots. Um, between Fnatic and Misfits, I mean, it's like no one wants to say it, but one of them can definitely fall out of playoffs. Nine is the magic number and it's not going that well. For Misfits particularly, yeah, you know, what did they say? Like the higher the rise, the deeper you fall or something. There was so much hype. That roster is so good on paper. They won so convincingly the first couple of weeks. And I'm not an expert there. I don't know what happened, but it did seem like they got down on themselves after they lost those first couple of games. And in that, kudos to them for bringing in Hussein because he obviously went through a lot with that team already. So he knows what to do in this situation. So we'll see. Brings a lot of structure, according to Soas yes. in my interview. So uh, yeah, he also <laughs> so. said that. I think he said, "Oh, I landed, and then we just like we didn't have anything back. We mm. had a good open conversation with everyone and let it all out, which is very important." Right. So. Let's talk a bit about the LEC in general, because obviously there's been the LEC design overhaul and the, the uh, broadcast overhaul yeah. in general. And like, I feel like, and I'm wondering how much uh, of you personally um, have been involved in, mm -hmm. in, in this. I feel like the LEC broadcast has had a lot more identity and probably the, the strongest identity out of any League of Legends broadcast in the world right now yeah. with like, you know, segments from Vedius who's <laughs> going crazy, uh, Medic and Quickshot uh, uh, suffering from his brain. 
break up and all that kind of stuff. Um, what's like your personal take on all of that and how much were, were you involved pushing that kind of stuff? Uh, well, I think um, that it's been a process that's been in the making for the last two years, actually, since the beginning of 2018. And I think it's all kind of come to a climax now because of the rebrand. Um, mm -hmm. Many of us, me included, were in brainstorms, really long brainstorms with people from the design studio where uh, I'm sure this is normal for people who've done these kind of things, but you like put down all your thoughts. They ask you, okay, what is EULCS? What is it for you? What do you want it to invoke? Wrote that all down. Then we uh, had a lot of games where we talked about icons and different sports and we compared to other leagues of esports and other sports and what we wanted to get out of it. And that all together brought what you see. So it really was a yeah, cooperative effort from everybody involved, but you know, especially from design studio as well. But I think everything you see in terms of broadcast decisions and narrative and stuff like that is something that we've been working on actively since January 2018. Our producer then sat us down and we heard everything from Reddit and, uh, you know, the fact that they were like, oh, there's no personality and some of it was kind of herder, but it did come back often enough that we wanted to take a good, look, good hard look at what we were doing. Honestly, I feel like some of us maybe lost a bit of motivation because it seemed like whatever we did, community didn't like we you know didn't have the capability to do everything by ourselves i've talked to you about that a couple of times already but in terms of the show elements from january 2018 now we had a plan we chose players we wanted to build and we we're going to build them and sometimes we went overboard with the kings and the crowns and the legacy we had stories that we wanted to push we tried to come out of a segment with okay if i'm a viewer what do you want to take from this you want to be watching this guy you want to know about the stakes you want to know what this is all for because you're excited to watch we worked so much around building and and around like for ourselves being more cognizant of what we wanted to convey and also we said if you're going to do something, anything cringe, funny, serious, highly analytical, do it 100% or don't do it at all. And I think that has really come to show. And honestly, we've done a lot of that last year. But now with the rebrand, with the teams, with the excitement, it's all coming together. And Darius, like... I couldn't be happier. I've been with the broadcast for seven years and we were the little sister of NA for a very long time because, you know, all of a sudden there were two broadcasts, like how nobody knew really what they were doing. There weren't enough people. There wasn't anything. And then Europe was great at Worlds, so we got that always as a good fallout. But production-wise, it lagged a bit behind and we had to deal with a lot. And we always tried to fight against it and we always tried to make things better for the viewers. So... Dude, I'm so happy. <laughs> but we also know that, like, you know, if it's good, people are going to find new things to improve. And that's good, right? Yeah. But it's about separating the the good constructive criticism yeah, from the but, bitching. <laughs> Sorry. Always striving for the best, of course. Yeah. Oh, my uh, God, I gave you a whole answer there. It's good. It's good. I love it. I love your yeah. enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm so happy to, to see you being so happy about all of this. Uh, I'm personally very, very happy with the LEC broadcast as well, because, yeah. again, what I said uh, earlier was that for the first time ever, I feel like uh, Europe or like if you guys have really double down on identity and yep. like ve everyone now knows Vedius, okay? Everyone knows yep. Quickshot, everyone knows Medic, like even even uh, Dracos even. And you know, especially in the past, I felt like there were a lot of times when in EU we had, we had you, Deficio and Quickshot. Yep. Um, and you know, then kind of the other castes were kind of just doing their yeah, thing. I mean, also because it was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. because the same casters got sent to international events all the time. Exactly. So they would get more exposure there. So then when they'd go back to NA, people would be happy that they, you know, they'd be like, oh, I saw this guy at Worlds and our guys did not get to go as much because I think a lot of them were also still in development phase, you know, Vedias yeah. three years ago and stuff like that. But they've all made such big strides now and Vedius holds his own on the international <laughs> desk just as well as anywhere else so it all takes time and I've definitely been frustrated at times I'm like why isn't our crew being held in higher regard and I think I th you probably can follow me in this but a lot of what you see on Reddit and on Twitter it's like weird because they talk about things that already don't happen again like it's like mm -hmm. oh i don't like this because that and you look at that example and it's actually something that is six months old or a year or someone that says i never watch analyst deck segments because they're always boring or whatever this and that but both in na and eu we've made so many strides and decisions to make those more interesting and more compelling so uh, if you're one of those people i invite you to take another look at some of the segments and if you then don't like it that's fine as well but <laughs> I, I agree of course with that notion what i 
found interesting was, and I, I, I personally view it as a positive, right? Um, for example, when, when the show opened, yeah. when the first day of LEC, uh, there was this amazing uh, The Adventures of Medias and Vedias yeah. uh, segment. And on I purpose. loved it <laughs> on purpose. And people loved it. And there were like hundreds of comments on, on Twitter and on Reddit and everything. And then there were you know, a few dozen people who were like, oh my God, this is so, so cringe, good. this That's is so fine. bad. But exactly, to, to have this kind of attitude to say, hey, if we do something fantastic that like, let's say 92% of people love, then and 8% hate, then it's better than to do something that, you know, everyone kind of is okay yeah, with. The best comment I saw was, LEC has learned to weaponize yeah. cringe and use it as a tool. And I think it's true. And also, I think, I think hold us accountable, right? If it's too much. We did have, because of 2018, as I told you before, was the kind of year that we wanted to try a lot mm -hmm. of different things. We went overboard a lot. Like, I remember doing the Norway segment where afterwards I was like, okay, it was kind of funny. But what did it really bring? Because at the end of the day, it does have to fit into the broadcast goals. Build up those personalities, build up those players, get people interested in the story of the teams um, and sometimes that's not the case and then we hear you guys you know sometimes it's too much but hey I love a good bit of cringe I think cringe is cool you know you have to be a strong person to be able to watch cringe and not look away it's yeah. kind of a test of of character and I think like uh, oftentimes when, when people accuse um, other or, like the, the broadcast of cringe I don't even think it's cringy no, honestly half of the time I'm like what what world do you live in that's yeah. that's not cringe but uh, you know different people have different flavors and we've got to be I mean, respectful of that like let, let's say there's a viewer who's like 14 and it's like oh my god that's so cringe yeah. we, we have been on Mission the internet <laughs> 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 we've been on the internet for a little bit longer yeah. and we're going you know we, we've seen some yeah. other stuff yeah, for sure for sure but yeah as in anything in moderation everything works so, one last question. Squeaky chair. Yeah, it's, it's really, <laughs> <laughs> that, that one's a tilter. But um, uh, right now, you're obviously a freelancer. For, for what kind of other games are you like uh, looking to, to dive into? CSGO is probably high up on the yeah, list. Yeah, I think for me, CSGO would be a natural fit because, uh, honestly, when you do this job, which you probably know as well, it's really hard to keep track of other things because there's league all the time and there's a lot more to do for you probably also you know like for me now like editing and streaming and pitching and talking to you know possible people you want to work with <laughs> paperwork germany there's a lot but csgo is something i always find myself watching uh, and i just think is one of the best esports out there like oh my god a good csgo is amazing so i really hope i get a chance to work with a CSGO organizer this year and I know it's not that evident because like people like you know tweet sometimes oh Shock's hired this person or whatever but it's not that easy and I may be established in League of Legends but that doesn't mean I'm established in anything else especially in things that are so detailed and require so much mm -hmm. expertise as other games and I know there are many hosts that do this very well for instance Red Eye he's a chameleon right he can go anywhere and I definitely don't have that yet uh, I you know, I, I need a lot of preparation. I need to really be immersed in, in what I'm going to do before I can take it on and not be nervous. And that's really cool because it's exciting. And I um, will most likely in the next couple of weeks announce something that is completely different. And I hope I can share it with you guys. And that's going to take a lot out of me. But that's exactly why I went freelance, because I want to be thrown into the deep end. Because you, you walk around here, the studio is decked out. The production crew is so good at what they do. The show is squeaky clean. Like, it's so good. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to see some different scenes as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, you always learn from those uh, yeah. adventures as well. And you improve as a person. And then when you come back to LEC, you are even more trained and you've seen more things yeah. and um, are able to do other things. Anything you would like to say to your I personal fans? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Should I try to like... No, it's okay. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, anything you would like to say to your own fans or the LEC fans? Uh, yeah, for sure. LEC fans are my fans. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, it's been seven years already and I know you guys have been very positive in my transition to freelance and I see you when you say you miss me on the LEC but good news, I'll be there week nine and all the playoffs as well. Plus, you may see some very interesting guests on the broadcast on the uh, casting team in the next couple of weeks. Maybe. I'm just saying. It's going to be super exciting. I just want, at this point, I, I've talked with Rekos about the rap battle thing. Please yeah. do one. Please do one. I cannot confirm that I may not or may be making a cameo on the next one, maybe. 
Very excited. <laughs> uh, and a hashtag for the people that watch until the end. Your personal hashtag. Oh, my per- what is my personal? Do I need you to make one up? Um, not everything is cringe. <laughs> hashtag not everything is cringe. That is a good hashtag. Yeah. It's a good lesson in life as well. Thank you so much, Shox, for your time. Of course, make sure to follow on all her social uh, accounts, YouTube and Twitch in particular, since she's been growing that very strongly with Thanks amazing stuff. Follow the shock caller, dot GG on YouTube and on Twitter and on any other platform. Uh, Instagram. We Instagram. do Instagram stories. Instagram now. stories for behind the scenes stuff. Exactly. Okay. And votes and everything else. Yeah. yeah. But make sure to follow, of course. Uh, hashtag not everything is cringe. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you guys had a good day. This was Darius from the Shot Color. See you guys then. Bye bye. We'd especially like to thank Christoph Buinovic, Etienne, Thomas Göttel, Dominic Bolze, Lazy Raven, Adam Novoswiat, Erich Althaus, and La Maviota for your very special support. And of course, also. We'd like to thank all the people whose names you see scrolling past you right now. And of course, also all the people that like, comment, subscribe, and support our work. Without you, our work wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much.